I'm going to start recording. And letting everybody in. It's so hard talking to a screen. <clears throat> Are you doing the slides for us? So when I click forward, it's going to go to the first slide? Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to flip this over. It's going to shrink so, so that I can see the power. So as soon as he introduces me, you're going to All right, folks. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Boca Chambers uh, webinar entitled The State of Palm Beach County Business with our very special guest, the President and CEO of the Business Development Board of Palm Beach County, Kelly Smallridge. We are excited uh, to have you with us here this afternoon. Um, we are, we're with Kelly for an entire hour. This is a great opportunity to get, to, to get up to speed on what business looks like across the county uh, and what business might look like when we get through this, uh, this crisis called COVID-19. Um, what I'm going to do first, uh, I'm going to hand the program over to uh, Chastity Navarro on our team. She's going to give you um, some of the housekeeping rules, how you can ask questions uh, at, on the second half of the meeting. And so, Chastity, I'll turn it over to you for now. Good afternoon, everyone. As Troy said, thank you so much for being with us today. We greatly appreciate you taking the time and hearing from our wonderful Kelly Smallridge. Um, at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar, you're going to see that there is a Q&A button. So if you have any questions, just click on that Q&A button, put your question in, and we will be answering questions at the end of this presentation. I want to let you know that this presentation is being recorded. You'll be able to find the recording on the Boca Chambers YouTube channel on our events and resources playlist. So we hope you enjoy the presentation and have a great day. Thanks. Thank you, Chastity. Uh, again, um, I want to thank Kelly, who's uh, been very, very busy uh, during these uh, challenging times for carving out uh, an hour to be with us today, uh, to chat with us, to share with us her ideas and thoughts about business in Palm Beach County, and then to make yourself available for, for some questions. And I'm sure there will be some towards the end uh, of the presentation. Uh, what I'd like to do is to read her bio. Kelly's uh, been in the business for a few years. Um, and she's got a, a very impressive bio and it's, it's really hard to condense because there's so many significant things that she's done uh, in her career. So um, I'm gonna read not the full bio, but certainly uh, many of the highlights uh, over her 32 years in the career. So um, she is the president and CEO of uh, Palm Beach County's public-private economic development agency called the Business Development Board, as we know. She's worked there uh, since she was four for 32 years. Um, she has served as, uh, as the longest tenured economic development president in the state of Florida uh, and has an amazing track record of facilitating some of the largest job creation projects for all of Palm Beach County. In 2013, in fact, Governor Rick Scott awarded Kelly with the Governor's Ambassador Medal, recognizing her hard work in creating jobs for Palm Beach County. She oversees all operations of the BDB, which is one of only two accredited economic development boards in the state of Florida. In 2004, she became the first female president of a South Florida economic development board after serving in many different capacities uh, within the organization, including the lead role for the recruitment, retention, and expansion from 1988 to 2004. In addition, she serves as chair of the Florida Economic Development Council, FEDC, and as a director on the following boards, Enterprise Florida, South Florida Fair, the Homeless Coalition, and the Education Foundation. In 2013 and 19, Kelly was featured on Fox News, CNBC, and the New York Post, touting the assets of Palm Beach County. Under her leadership, the BDB has received numerous state and national awards for its work in recruiting and expanding companies to Palm Beach County, and is credited with facilitating two of the world's largest bioscience organizations to the state, the Scripps Research Institute from San Diego, and the Max Planck Society from Germany. Her aggressive style in facilitating relocations and expansions has led to big announcements of jobs for this county from companies like United Technologies, Amazon, ADT, Pratt Whitney, G4S, FedEx, Sikorsky Helicopters, Aldi, 
and TBC uh, Corporation, just to name a few, there are many more. She's also credited with creating several new programs for Palm Beach County. The first expedited permitting ordinance, which was adopted by 15 cities uh, in the county, a countywide shovel ready program to identify sites ready for construction within 12 months, as well as an education initiative, which provides a one-step resource for CEOs to find public, private, charter and faith-based schools when deciding to relocate. So those are just some of the highlights that, that Kelly has accomplished over her career. Um, she's also the proud mom of three really cool boys, which is probably her, her most, uh, her best accomplishment, she would probably say. Um, uh, the Boca Chamber uh, is uh, just so blessed to have Kelly in this role. Um, we work with her um, constantly and, and trying to assist when any of these companies want to relocate into, uh, into South County. And so um, we are so pleased to have her here today. And so uh, with that uh, introduction, I'm going to now turn the program over to our, our guest speaker, President and CEO of the Business Development Board of Palm Beach County, Kelly Smallridge. Kelly? Thank you so much, Troy. I would say that the Boca Chamber is very blessed to have you and your effective leadership. And we've long been friends and worked together. And uh, I, I sincerely appreciate all that your chamber and your board has done to be a real partner to this organization that has so many chamber leaders as a part of our economic development efforts. So good afternoon, everybody. And I am happy to give you a state of Palm Beach County address to let you see uh, firsthand the type of economic development activity that's taking place in Palm Beach County. I prepared a couple of slides uh, to illustrate that for you. And as I mentioned to Troy, I'm not really going to talk a whole lot about Boca Raton because you all live and breathe that every day. But I thought what I would do is show you everything from Boca Raton North and talk a little bit about COVID with the caveat that I am the eternal optimist. And so I am uh, overly optimistic that even though we are among some of the most challenging times, I believe in the resiliency of our Palm Beach County. And while it may seem that unemployment is very high right now, I think that we will bounce back, just is going to take a little bit of time and patience. So allow me to share with you a couple of slides about the types of industries and some of the things that we're seeing in Palm Beach County. First of all, if I've never had the chance to meet you before, a little bit about this organization if it's new to you, we are now about 38 years old. We operate as a 501c6 private economic development board. What makes us very different from any other business organization in Palm Beach County is one, we have an official contract with the Board of County Commissioners to represent all 39 cities in Palm Beach County in terms of recruitment, retention, and expansion. And number two, we have an official MOU with Enterprise Florida. So when the governor receives leads of companies that want to move to Palm Beach County, it is this organization as an umbrella organization that receives that inquiry. I have a 15 member staff, and like I said, we cover 39 cities, but our staff is from Boca Raton to Jupiter and spans all the way out to the Glades at about a $3.4 million budget. So as Troy mentioned, one of two accredited economic development organizations in the state and a board of about 42 that I report to. Let's talk a little bit about Palm Beach County and where we are. Still have a population of 1.4 million, one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Florida, 2,000 square miles, and the largest county in geographic land mass. The average salary of Palm Beach County is about 53,000, again, the largest average salary of all 67 counties in the state of Florida. If I were talking to you in February, I would have told you that we hit a pretty much an all-time low for unemployment, about 3.2% unemployment. And today, it's probably closer to 14%, and it may even creep up to 20%. But let's frame that and understand where that number's coming from. As long as our hotels are operating at about 25 to 50% capacity, our restaurants are not operating at full capacity, and our small businesses are just now ramping up, and our cultural attractions for the most part are all shut down, we're going to have that number go up. It will gradually come down as these operations uh, get back in order, and the Business Development Board, along with your chamber and several other chambers, have been leading industry working groups where we're meeting with county commissioners and county staff every day to get this economy back up and running. I've listed a couple of those working groups for you just to let you know that we're on it every day 
We're working hard on your behalf to bring us back to where we were pre-COVID. We're addressing infrastructure. Now that our kids are learning from home, do they have the technology that they need? How do we bring Wi-Fi to them if they don't have it in some of the underserved communities? As well as education, when will our schools get up and running? What resources do they need? How can we get our hotels back up and operational? What are the safety standards? How do we get our agriculture when harvest season starts in August? How do we bring those workers back? so that the farms and the, and the workers coming in from outside countries are operating in a safe manner. And then how do we communicate out to the businesses? I think that's been the biggest challenge so far is how do we communicate to all of you a clear set of standards as to what is open and what is not. And I thank the Boca Chamber for being a part of those efforts. While we market Palm Beach County, I would say that the Bright Line as an infrastructure tool and the working with Broward and Miami Dade about a year or so ago on the Amazon project really gave the Economic Development Board from South Florida the chance to pitch South Florida as an economic region rather than only Palm Beach County all of the time. And so I would say in my sales pitch that we have a population of 6.5 million, about 375,000 college students to fuel the workforce and the talent pipeline connected by three ports and three international airports. So as you are out there pitching Palm Beach County, remember to pitch the region, because as a region, we are so much stronger and CEOs really don't see lines between Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade. When we are working to bring companies into Palm Beach County, whether it be Boca Raton or Jupiter, we have a unique set of services that we offer. Uh, we offer real estate. Uh, a CEO is coming in tomorrow afternoon, a matter of fact, looking for about 40,000 square feet of Class A office space, wants to know where his children will go to school, where he will live, what's the tax environment, can he meet the mayor, what's the talent pipeline, how do they get access to the talent through Florida Atlantic University or Palm Beach or Lynn, and then also the demographics of the area. So look at this organization as a one-stop shop for all the services that a CEO may need in a very confidential manner, signing non-disclosure agreements, and our services are absolutely free. Again, it's on behalf of the cities and on behalf of Palm Beach County. As we shift, I'd like to share with you, because for all of you who are chamber members, every day you're looking for business opportunities here in Palm Beach County. And I know that there isn't anybody looking at this presentation right now that does business solely within the confines of Boca Raton. You're looking throughout the region, you're looking throughout the state. So allow me to talk about a couple of industries that we see as really growing that you may not know about. Palm Beach County is home to 1,300 aviation, aerospace, and engineering companies. Yes, I said 1,300. There are about 17,000 people that work in this aviation, aerospace industry. And it really got its start back in the 1950s when Pratt Whitney came in from Connecticut it took 7,000 acres of land in the northwestern part of our county with a million square feet. And as Pratt Whitney located here, to the right was Sikorsky Helicopters manufacturing the CH-53K, and to the left was Aerojet Rocketdyne. And from there, all of these companies that you see on the screen, Belcan, BRPH, Gulfstream, Florida Turbine Technologies, have all spread out because we have this hub of aerospace giants. And these smaller companies with either five employees up to 200 employees, not only take advantage of the giants that are here, but also the activity up at the Cape. So I have a little short video I'd like to share with you to give you a broader perspective on what this industry looks like in Palm Beach County. Companies that are here are gaining an international reputation. Here locally at this facility of Lockheed Martin and Brett Whitney and Eric Rockdown. But in the broader area, there's a lot of engineering services companies. We can work with one another, we can support one another, we can provide services. There's a lot of collaboration on commercial programs, on military programs, and on space programs. We have suppliers in the supply chain that's already established doing this work for many, many years in aviation. So the, the, the processes that are here, you won't find anywhere else.
overview of the aerospace industry and some of the dynamic companies that make up that cluster, but I'd like to share with you some new activity in the industry. While Pratt Whitney has about 90,000 square feet or a million square feet, they're building a 90,000 square foot facility for the commercial side, 215 new jobs. Again, to show you the transformation of this economy from one built on real estate, agriculture, construction, and tourism to now moving towards technology and innovation like what you see here on the screen. Another example, if you just drive down Southern Boulevard and you go north on Military Trail, you will see this new facility under construction. Gulfstream Aviation is building a 115,000 square foot uh, facility to house these aircraft. And this is a ripple effect. The reason you're seeing these types of fixed based operators expand around the perimeter of the airport is because there are so many individuals seeking a South Florida location that have an, a private aircraft, and therefore you see net jets, Gulfstream, uh, various types of fixed base operators all constructing and expanding their operations to accommodate this new wealth that's moving into the county. Here's one for you in Boca Raton that I believe you probably are not aware of, but this is a Israeli company that came into Boca Nano Dimensions, moved their US headquarters. And I put them in the aviation industry because they provide additive manufacturing services to the aviation cluster, and they manufacture these products that are also installed in cell phones. So uh, please welcome this gentleman uh, to your Boca Raton area. Moving on to another cluster, as you can recall back in 2004, Palm Beach County through a number of different agencies and the Board of County Commissioners along with Governor Bush, we were very successful in 2004 and 2006, bringing two of the world's largest research and development institutes into Palm Beach County. One, the Scripps Research Institute out of La Jolla, and the second one, the Mox Planck Society. And nowhere in the United States will you ever find two of the world's largest R&D institutes co-located with a university in Florida Atlantic's North Campus is co-located with these two research institutes. Now add 15 hospitals that you see on the screen and you get this type of activity coming in from the outside. So it, it has always been one of our dreams to build upon that cluster and shortly thereafter in the last several years, Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital built a 14,000 square foot facility on State Road 7 between Lake Worth Road and 441. Baptist Hospital, as you know, came in and acquired Boca Raton Regional, as well as Bethesda. Hospital for Special Surgery came in and bought a facility, one of the most world-renowned orthopedic centers, bought a facility in downtown West Palm Beach. And Cleveland Clinic has also purchased a large piece of property at Lake Worth Road in the Turnpike, I believe about 60 acres to build a couple hundred thousand square feet, and has not broken ground on that as of yet. Also, what you probably don't know, is part of building out that life science ecosystem for Palm Beach County. One of the biggest gaps that we've had in the ecosystem was the lack of an incubator. And I'm proud to announce that this is one of three incubators that have been created in the last two years to foster the development of spinoffs from Scripps and Mox Planck. This is called Beacon Pharmaceutical, which is probably the larger of the three building a state-of-the-art facility with 200,000 square feet, 137 new jobs. This was a cold call uh, that our, our organization made to a New York entity, and they have signed an agreement with the town of Jupiter to build this facility, which will be located at the Turnpike in Indian Town Road. The other one will be closer to Scripps, 
and then FAU's North Campus will have the third facility. So we went for 15 years without having any incubator to now we have three. So I would say we have ample room for housing that. And Tech Runway is also a part of these efforts to grow the life science companies. Right in your Boynton Beach area, and I know you all also cover Boynton Beach, a big win, and thank you for the chamber and the city of Boynton Beach. This project would not have been possible without the support of many partners, but NYU Langone, again, coming in from the outside, a customer service center, 500 new jobs, taking 100,000 square feet at 3301 Quantum Boulevard in Boynton Beach. Moving on to corporate headquarters, you all know that Boca Raton is the home of corporate headquarters. We have 70 corporate headquarters roughly in Palm Beach County. And Boca Raton proudly has about half of those, a really sweet spot for economic development for the city. And I would say that your private airport also plays a part in that. Your all A-rated schools plays a part in that. Your quality of life is also very important. And I know that most recently in the South Florida Business Journal, you read about our recent win, Misfits Gaming, which was a combination of an operation in California, and I believe an operation in Israel, came together to lease 18,000 square feet. And if any of you have teenage kids that stay up all night, like mine do, playing Fortnite, um, this company owns two teams, national teams, that compete in this very large growing industry of esports. And I'm proud that they picked Boca Raton for their corporate headquarters. Another win for the city of Boca Raton that you probably don't know about, this is the Northwest Company. This is their international corporate headquarters that we brought in from uh, Canada. 35 new, very high paying jobs, six figures. Thank you to the city of Boca Raton and also the chamber for helping us relocate them into your city. Moving on to communications and technology, and I know you're familiar with this slide, but you have the home of the IBM PC right there at um, your facility on Yamato Road. And certainly that now has been transformed into, I would say, the greatest technology and innovation center in all of Palm Beach County. And we tout it as that with the home of Modernizing Medicine, 3C Interactive down the street. But technology and innovation also spans all the way up to Palm Beach Gardens where you'll find CrossMatch, which if you swipe your thumb at a prison, a hospital, at school board headquarters, that cross metrics technology was developed by one of our very own Palm Beach County companies at RCA Boulevard in PGA. Again, more opportunities for all of you. As long as we have access to three ports and three international airports, a population of 6.2 million, we are always going to be a hub for logistics and distribution centers. While there are 15 here in Palm Beach County, the size of these facilities are two and 300,000 square feet apiece, and they bring big capital investment in big technology. I'll share a couple of new announcements with you. Niagara Water Bottling went to the Palm Beach Park of Commerce. They built about 400,000 square feet of space. They recently expanded into another facility that was not co-located with this facility, so they've had great success. They did not receive $1 in incentives to move here, the number one incentive for this company was expedited permitting through Palm Beach County. And I can't stress enough how important it is, speed to market and getting companies in a building is the best way to win these companies and their jobs. In addition to Niagara, we also brought in an Amazon facility. And I would say that this is not the last Amazon facility that's going to be located in Palm Beach County. Because of this growing population, I see more. And because of everything happening with COVID, and everyone buying products online. They did their first facility of 96,000 square feet, about 300 jobs. And all I can say without disclosing anything is keep your eyes tuned for more in the South Florida market with Amazon. One of our marketing strategies that uh, is the reason why we were on Fox and CNBC is that we have been going after CEOs who have purchased a second home in some of the wealthiest markets in this area. We are fortunate to have five wealth markets. Most counties don't have any wealthy markets, but because we have 42 miles of coastline, naturally there's going to be a lot of wealth. So the island of Jupiter, Delray Manalapan, Palm Beach, Boca Raton, and Wellington, there are 42 billionaires 
who call Palm Beach County their home, and 71,000 millionaire households. How does that translate to economic development? Exactly what you see on the screen. As the Economic Development Board, one of our very creative marketing strategies is to go behind the gates and into the personal homes of CEOs that have decided to invest here personally, but have not uh, moved a business to this area at all. And here are some examples. And these guys know that I'm gunning for them and I'm after their business. Gentlemen on the left, my left at least, is the CEO of Quicken, Home, Quicken Loans. He bought a home on the island of Jupiter. Ken Griffin of Citadel leased the entire Four Seasons Resort in Palm Beach to move Citadel's trading floor from Chicago to the island during COVID. He also bought $250 million worth of residential real estate in Palm Beach. So for us, we think it's natural that Citadel is going to move some, or at least we, we're hopeful that he'll move some operation here. And we eventually are going to be flying an airplane in front of the Four Seasons Resort to express our interest in locating Citadel here while Ken Griffin is operating out of Four Seasons. And then the CEO of Urban Outfitters also bought a home here in Palm Beach County. It's a lot easier for us to go over the bridge and a lot cheaper and more effective than to try and cold call in New York, Boston, and Connecticut. So this is one of the most lucrative economic development strategies for Palm Beach County. This is what it's turned into. If you go to our website, you will find more than 70 financial service firms, hedge funds, venture capital, family offices, private equity firms have moved their operations to escape the Northeast and to find a home. And they're mostly locating the Boca Raton, uh, West Palm and the Palm Beach Gardens corridor. And I'd like to share with you a little video. This is one of your own guys that we brought into Boca Raton and Troy and the chamber team was a big part of the courting of Al Rabel and Kane Anderson. He's now at One Town Center Road and proudly boasts his operations coming from Armont, New York to your city. And let's hear a little bit from Al about what he thinks of Palm Beach County. <laughs> I've never heard anyone complain about shoveling humidity. I think that's one of the greatest lines for marketing Palm Beach County. And Al is just one example out of, as I mentioned, 70. So this is what it has turned into. The Flagler Financial District, and as I mentioned, there are pockets like this in Boca and also in Palm Beach Gardens. But the city of West Palm Beach created a district solely to capture, or at least to brand the area for those that want to move their financial service firm. So while the average salary of Palm Beach County is 53,000, the average salary of this industry is about a million. And I would say that these are not only large companies, these are also small operations. Many of them have not moved their corporate headquarters. They've moved five or 10 people taking 5,000 square feet. And then two or three years down the road, they may decide to move more of their operations. Again, to take advantage of a business friendly environment, no state tax on personal income automatically they are receiving a boost to their salaries. And the vast majority of them, probably not any of them, have ever taken advantage of any incentives. Here's another example of one that moved into the area recently, Evercore Wealth Management went to 515 North Flagler. And then in your backyard, 
Corey Burns was a simple phone call to the Business Development Board. Hey, we're interested in moving Bergen Asset Management to your area. He fell in love with the Boca Raton area, so he is new to Boca Raton. Now I'm gonna shift a little bit. The, the next couple of slides are the end of my presentation, and this is among COVID. Some of the new activity that we see coming into Palm Beach County, I'm of the mindset that build it and they will come. Today, there is about a 12% vacancy rate in the office market and about 2.7% vacancy rate in the industrial market. In my 30 plus years of doing economic development in Palm Beach County, I've yet to see a building be completely vacant. So while we are among some challenging times in uh, the country right now, I would say that the mere idea that these developers are going forward certainly gives us some indication as to where economic development will be and the type of capacity that we have to court more companies to come to Palm Beach County. One West Palm is a building under construction right now. This is owned by billionaire Jeff Green. It's about 30% under construction, 206,000 square feet in the city of West Palm Beach. If you are familiar with the city place, which is now being rebranded as Rosemary Square, the second building is close to 260,000 square feet of office space. And again, these two buildings are the first office building to ever be constructed in a 10 to a 12 year period in the city. And then approved is one flagler for about 295,000 square feet. That is owned by uh, the related group, Stephen Ross, owner of the Miami Dolphins. It's slated to go at Flagler and Okeechobee. And then if you look uh, at the fourth one, which is in negotiations right now, it's a fourth office building to be open and it will go on the tent site of roughly 400,000 plus square feet of space led by Mr. Cohen. So if you add all of that together and you're sort of gauging where growth might be, and you all know the Boca Raton growth, now add about 1.2 million square feet of new construction in the West Palm market. But just to put it in perspective, Boca Raton has 11 million square feet of space to the city of West Palm's 2 million square feet. So even when West Palm adds this square footage, they still won't be close to what Boca Raton has. And therein lies why Boca Raton, one of the reasons why Boca has so many corporate offices and corporate users. If you look at uh, another area of growth in the downtown West Palm area, hotel prospects in the pipeline. You can see a number of hotels that are either under construction um, in the number of room nights, so 888 rooms completed, about 1,500 not started yet, so the city of West Palm will soon have 2,400 uh, new hotel rooms, and Jorge Pescara of Discover the Palm Beaches will tell you that there still isn't enough. Now add in there the expansion of the convention center, and certainly you can see the type of potential that our area has to bring in more hotel activity uh, for all of Palm Beach County, really. I'm going to shift to the north part of our county. You probably did not know that Florida Power and Light has purchased an 80-acre site at the corner of PGA and Military, and they are constructing this six-story office building with a three-story parking garage. Again, imagine the capital investment for a facility of this size, like 270,000 square feet. That will look like this, which I think is just phenomenal. Um, very forward, contemporary, and coming to a corner that is an open field right now. Again, UFPL is a great partner of the Boca Raton Chamber. They're a great partner of our organization as well as the State Enterprise Florida. And we're so pleased to see this investment landing in our county and happy that they call Palm Beach County their corporate headquarters. In the north end of the county, if you're driving down 95, you'll also see these two towers that have the spiral on the top. Uh, City of Palm Beach Gardens, like many other cities, requires art anytime that you build a new development. So that spiral on the, on the top of the building is the art that they contributed. But these are twin towers. They look exactly alike. Two 11-story towers. So now the City of Palm Beach Gardens will have 111,000 new square feet to market to potential office users coming in from the outside and then again some from the inside. Another development that you probably don't know about is called Avenir. This is roughly 2,400 acres of land out in the northwestern part of our county. 
And you can see the different uses and what is planned. This is all under construction right now. But something that I wanted to make you aware of is on this acreage, as part of them getting the zoning that they wanted, the trade-off with the city was to make sure that there was a component of this property that would capture good quality jobs. So the Business Development Board is working with the City of Palm Beach Gardens, and in this site, they have 50 acres slated for economic development, which we know we have a feather in our cap. Should the appropriate user come along, these 50 acres could be available for free, for example, for corporate headquarters. No manufacturing, no light industrial, but it's just good to know that that's there for the right type of company. And you can see uh, the, the rendering of how they're going to break up the property there. And a unique feature is the Crystal Lagoon. This is the man-made lake. You've seen these, uh, I believe, in Miami, but you can see how large that is with a great component of this property being set aside for preserve. There you go, there's a big picture. One of the greatest assets that this particular development will have. Then in the north end of the county, there's also PGA Station. Again, as you're looking at growth opportunities, whether you're an accountant or you're an attorney or any other type of professional service, look at the opportunity that Palm Beach County has to bring more corporate users in. This will sit along tri-rail, 30-acre site, some space for office, and then a hotel room. And last, our Academic Leaders Council. Education is the currency of economic development. We are tied at the hip with our superintendent of schools, our public and private university presidents. As we bring in CEOs, one of the greatest secret weapons that this organization has is to be able, when a CEO comes in, to introduce them to university presidents because that assures them that that's where they're going to get their strong talent pipeline. And in a moment's notice, whether it's Dr. Ross, President Parker, Dr. Kelly, or any of the individuals you see on the screen, they will come out and meet with our CEOs and they're part of the A-team that helps us win these deals for Palm Beach County. No matter where you travel in the country, they will tell you that incentives are not the driving force. It's the ability to attract a strong pipeline that will make their company competitive. And this is why we are so bullish on Palm Beach County's economy. Again, even though we are among some of the most challenging times, I'll pull out a couple of uh, companies. You know we deal with code names, so we are courting a very large user that will announce in the fall 140,000 square feet for the area of Western uh, Bell Glade, and it's in the construction manufacturing industry. Uh, they've already made it through the city with their plans, and we hope to come out. This, this area has about a 27% unemployment rate, and we really hope, hope that we can bring this one to Bell Clay. Second would be Project Javelin, also manufacturing. This is an expansion of an existing company going to the central part of our county. Project Green Acres is a relocation coming from California and going to Palm Beach Gardens. And then one that's not on here that actually came as a result of COVID is Project Energy. And that is a million square foot built to suit we most recently took it through expedited permitting with the county, and now we're just waiting for them to sign the deal. So you can see that we have good prospects in the pipeline, the promise of good quality jobs. And while we know we have a high unemployment rate, perhaps we can shift some of those who lost their jobs in restaurant, retail, and tourism to some of the companies that are on the screen. So with that, Troy, thank you so much for always standing by our side, marketing, South Palm Beach County, uh, you and your cities that you represent have been real leaders and real strong supporters of this organization and we appreciate the partnership and I'm open to any questions that you all may have. All right, Kelly, um, thank you very much. That was uh, great to hear uh, all of the activity uh, going on uh, in our county. And thanks to you and, and your leadership and years of experience uh, to make all this happen, uh, even during um, this uh, these challenging times that we that we find ourselves in. It's, it was awesome to hear the good news out there and all this positive activity because we will get through this um, ultimately. I see there are some questions in the Q and A box, but um, I want to start it off. You you talked about 
um, some of the significant projects, um, commercial office buildings coming online specifically uh, in West Palm Beach. And so, you know, related to COVID, um, so many of us, although many of us back into our offices, realized for three months or so that uh, they could operate um, with a remote structure. And um, so now that they've done that, uh, and in particular, a lot of corporate headquarters, especially in Boca Raton, are not coming back quickly. Um, it's very phased, it's very deliberate, um, because they have, be they have become comfortable uh, with a, a remote work environment. What do you see that um, maybe new acceptance of remote work environment, the, the impact that it may have on commercial office space? So that's a good question, Troy. I would say that there definitely is the need for office space. Whether or not companies will go as large as they are right now, um, I seriously doubt that. I think that they will go a little smaller because they realize that their employees, for the most part, are as effective at home as they are in the office. But, I'm, but I don't think that office space is going to be ruled out entirely because as you and I know, we still need to see the faces of our employees from time to time. We still need space to gather and meet with our clients. So I don't think that office space is going to go away. Our companies right now, whether they're here in Florida or national or international, are all working on new workspace environments. So I kind of chuckle a little bit because I remember when it was so popular to have these open floor plans and I, I struggled a little bit with my own board who wanted me to wipe out all private offices and go with this open floor plan. Google was doing it, IBM was doing it, e y was doing it, and it was this mindset that let's all gather together and if we don't have any walls and we're all gonna be best friends and we're all gonna collaborate. And now we're seeing the conversation go back to where we are right now in private offices with distancing. Uh, so I think that the, the 10,000 square feet user may go to 7,000 square feet, mm -hmm. but people are not designing spaces today, the best that we can tell in all the national surveys, with open space plans. Right. Great. Yeah, we're hearing the same thing. Sort of related to that, then, if there is going to be um, some inventory of, of commercial space that may not be used, you know, the 10,000 square foot user to the 7,000 square foot user, any early read from the development community about what that space may become? Yes, so I'll give you an example of one of the buildings in West Palm being developed by uh, developer Jeff Green. Many of you may know him. And I think that given COVID is starting to have a conversation with the city of West Palm, although it's not a popular conversation and it is very controversial, about whether or not the space should be used in its original intention of being office space, or is there the possibility of converting that to apartment or hotel space? So the answer is it can be converted um, to hotel and apartments, and that is very popular. But I would also just discourage developers right now from having that knee-jerk reaction because of COVID, there seems to be an increased interest on behalf of companies in the Northeast to come to Florida for many different reasons. Just turn on your TV. While we have social unrest here, it's even more dominant in different parts of New York, Boston, Connecticut. But we certainly have not lost any momentum or steam when it comes to companies looking to move to Palm Beach County and Florida as a whole. So cities are listening, but they're not going to be quick to convert it to apartments and hotel, mm -hmm. although that is a possible use or reuse. Got it. Thank you. Um, another um, issue, and it, this did come up in one of the questions as well in the Q&A box, is you mentioned some of the companies that you courted and brought in have taken incentives and some have not. What's sort of the current state of, in, of incentives in the economic development world and especially what's it like now in Palm Beach County? So the current state is very different than it's ever been before. If you remember working very closely with Governor Rick Scott, he was a big supporter of incentives. He created a lot of tools for us. And uh, we had a good arsenal of city, county, and state incentives. And we knew if we were going after a big corporate headquarters or an Amazon 
type deal that we would be well equipped. I would say that the situation today is very different, uh, but I would not put up a red flag. I would just say, be mindful of the fact that as of May 31st, our state legislature did away with what's called a qualified target industry tax refund. And in the example, I'll use Boca Raton, your city has been aggressive in offering incentives to many of the companies that I presented to you today, but it has been with the mindset that they would do it in partnership with the state of Florida and leverage state funds. So put that incentive off, it's sunsetted, there are no tax incentives at the state level, although there are some training funds. The training funds are not near as large as what the QTI offer. However, what we've done at the local level, just so that Palm Beach County can be in the running, is we've worked with your city, Boca Raton, Boynton Beach, Delray, West Palm, Palm Beach Gardens, and Jupiter, to make them aware that should we come your way with a prospect that absolutely requires incentives, that your city has the infrastructure to offer incentives. So right now it's a city county incentive package, not a city county and state. I hope that in a few years, possibly even next legislative session, that your chamber will join us in advocating for the renewal of the Qualified Target Industry Tax Refund Program. Yeah, you can definitely count on us uh, being there. So, so with that then, when you think strategically about your marketing plans for recruitment, what, what does that look like now in terms of, you know, that type of communication out if you, now that you don't have that arsenal? So we put our advertising campaign on hold just for about two months because we knew people were not going to jump on planes to come here. Why waste $20,000 a month on an ad campaign? So we just shelved it for uh, August period. Uh, but like I said before, Palm Beach County remains very attractive, and I would say that COVID has even opened up some new opportunities. So we have a very active campaign in Boston, Connecticut, and New York. We will ramp it back up in August. But there's a new area that's also opened up, and it, it was hard to compete with them before because of the weather, but we're going back to, and that is the state of California. So ditch the coast that taxes you the most. Um, this is not your grandma's Palm Beach County. These are all conversations that we're having, but I've never seen so much interest uh, in California companies looking here. And if you saw, there was one in the pipeline where the corporate headquarters is moving here soon. And then we had a conversation last week with a 250,000 square foot office user of which we are one of four states in the running and that company's out of California. So we'll get back to a very strong marketing campaign because we are a partner of Enterprise Florida, we co-market and co-travel with the governor when he's out there shaking hands in other states. So just give us a few months. We're taking a breather because we don't think it makes sense right now. But when everybody gets back to travel and the new normal, we'll evaluate what the volume of that campaign is going to look like. Thank you. And uh, this is also a question in, uh, from the Q&A box. In terms of the industry clusters, and you highlighted aviation aerospace, which is just such a tremendous boost and stimulus to our economy. Um, you, you specify in different industry clusters. Has there been a, a, a change in strategy when it comes to that, what COVID related or not, but when you look to the future about what our industry cluster clusters are, any, any change in that? There, there have not been any changes in the cluster. So aviation, aerospace, business financial services, communications technology, life science, logistics distribution, I would say we're adding manufacturing. Manufacturing has been small, but given all the issues with China uh, and offshore manufacturing as a whole, there seems to be a resurgence in activity among manufacturing operations that went overseas because it was cheaper to now bring it back into this area. And South Florida, given the fact that we're the gateway to Caribbean and Latin markets, Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami Dade, we are all together working on bringing manufacturing into this area. The cost of labor and the cost of land seems to be the only challenge, but that is an added industry for us on top of the six or seven. And then I would also say that our equestrian industry, which you oftentimes don't hear about, is very large in Wellington, and we're looking at adding some new facilities in Wellington because that, that area has become a world-renowned dressage Olympic breeding ground. And most recently, we saw the relocation of a, 
a world-renowned uh, facility called Hegstrand. So manufacturing, equestrian are two big areas that we're adding to our targeted list. Right. Thank you. So question from, uh, from one of the uh, members uh, participating here. I'll just read it. Although there's a challenge with an increased uh, unemployment rate for finding work, do you feel that there will be a greater loss of opportunity for people over 50? At the same oh, time- I'm over 50. <laughs> and, then, and then it continues to say, at the same time, our population in Palm Beach County is almost 45% over 50, and employers complain about the lack of skills with new employees, what do you think are the prospects for employment among older workers? They're not older workers, they're just seasoned and knowledgeable. And, you know, I have conversations every day with employers and what they tell me is they are looking for the person who can make, especially in their C-suite, that is knowledgeable and has a good track record. For every company that I receive uh, as an inquiry, looking to move their operations here, I probably received 10 resumes of seasoned professionals who wanna move from the Northeast and the vast majority of them are all over 50 and we're able to spread those resumes out among newcomers. Are young people attractive to these new companies? Absolutely, but it's very hard to find a 25 year old that has the experience of a 52 year old seasoned engineer that's worked for Lockheed Sikorsky and Pratt Whitney is probably more marketable to an opening at Belcan or Parametrics than that 25 year old engineer coming out of University of Florida. So I would not say that that is as big as a challenge, but I would encourage that person over 50 years old to make sure that your credentials and that your experience and your certifications are all up to speed with that 25 year old. There are a lot of things that 25 year olds don't have that the over 50 year olds do have and CEOs looking to hire certainly understand that. And when they come in, they don't all ask for less than 50 year olds. They ask for a wide array, but I would also add that diversity and um, people who speak multiple languages is another reason why companies like this South Florida market. Thank you. We've got a question about the census here, Kelly, and it says, what impact will the 2020 census results have on business development? So we are very concerned that because of COVID that the census was sort of swept under the rug. And for every person that fills out the census, according to the county, the county receives $1,600 per person for multiple years, for 10 years. Um, and the county is ramping up its efforts to really encourage people, as you've seen on TV and social media, to really get everyone to fill this census out. The more money that the county has, the more money that they will have to put into the infrastructure that is absolutely necessary for our business development opportunities. And while the business development board may spend time out on the road showing someone the appropriate light industrial facility or showing them appropriate office space, these prospects also ask us, tell us about the infrastructure five and 10 years down the road. And it's important for us to paint that picture that we are going to have roads, water, sewer, bridges, and good schools, because they don't want to come into an area that is not financially sound. We're one of the only AAA rated counties in the state of Florida, and our county prides itself on being financially stable. So infrastructure, the census that results in dollars, goes back to infrastructure, which helps our business development efforts. Great, thanks. There's a question here about what's the best way for vendors to participate and get introduced to all developing companies in West Palm Beach. And I'll, 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 take, I'll answer that for you. First of all, you become the highest level member of the business development board <laughs> and engage in all of their activities. Um, you know, but Kelly can't release confidential information uh, until it goes public. And so, um, you can add to that, Kelly, but it would be to join, become engaged uh, in your operation, and then when the time is right, you know, you're, you're properly positioned um, to, to engage with any potential relocation. Yes, you said it very well, Troy, and as a member, we are constantly bringing these new companies to our events and exposing our members to introductions with these new companies that are moving in, but yes, that is the answer. 
yeah. engagement and membership is how companies are uh, aware of these new opportunities coming into the county. Yeah. So we just got a few minutes left, um, Kelly. I want to uh, first of all commend uh, the BDB for all that you do, and it's so much. Um, but um, during uh, during this crisis, you launched a website, an amazing resource called Biz Help PBC, and that's Biz B I Z Help PBC dot com, and it is providing all of us, and I think we're all linked to all of it. But do you want to talk a little bit more about that amazing resource you've all created? Yes, clarity during these uncertain times is absolutely the most ingredient and the best tool that we can provide you as our area businesses. And so Troy gave you the website. Every single 15 minutes, we are adding information. While we know that everybody has multiple sources of receiving this information, we have someone that's full-time putting a city, county, state, and federal resources on bizhelppbc.com. And thank you, Troy, for your partnership, as well as many other chambers in the Economic Council. We really have collaborated very well to provide this tool and resource to all of you in our area of Palm Beach County companies to get us through these times. Thanks. And one thing that, that is on, I think all of our websites, but certainly on uh, bizhelppbc.com are the uh, opportunities uh, for grants for businesses of all sizes. I think everyone by now knows that uh, Palm Beach County has their grant process. Um, uh, I, think, I think that the deadline for that is, is coming soon. Kelly, I can't remember, I should Friday. know. Uh, this Friday the 12th, yeah. so there's still time. If you have not, um, check out the eligibility requirements and get an application in there. And depending on where you are uh, in the county, um, Boynton Beach has now opened up another opportunity for, uh, for businesses in the city of Boynton Beach. Delray Beach just announced uh, that they have uh, a program for their businesses located in downtown. And Boca Raton too has uh, a relief grant fund as well for a half a million dollars and there's no deadline to apply for that. So you can find all of these opportunities that we are constantly con uh, communicating with you about on uh, bizhelppbc.com, uh, on bocachamber.com uh, and other resources. Um, thank you, Kelly, for, for mentioning that. I think that what I've seen, what we've always seen when we think about our chamber community working with our countywide uh, uh, EDO is that we're, we're working together more than ever um, this has been a challenging time for business, and um, we're all stepping up under your leadership. You've done an amazing job to help guide us along the way uh, from a, a countywide perspective. So we, we thank you very much for that. Um, Kelly's leading uh, initiatives with work groups that are addressing all of the concerns that we have. And so if you have not been on that website, we encourage you to, to look at it because it's an amazing resource to get very plugged in in one location about all the opportunities. I see that at 2.59, another question's popped in. Let me see if we can get to it. Oh, it's just congrats, Kelly, for being a South Florida Business Journal top 250 uh, power leader. Oh, thank we'll, you so much. We'll add that, uh, we'll add that to your, your resume. Um, but Kelly, again, we appreciate so much uh, uh, our partnership uh, with you, all of your support. We look forward to continuing it. For many many years, uh, you got a long way to go. So this 32-year career stuff is nothing. There's there's plenty of uh, plenty of time left, and we got a lot of work still to do in Palm Beach County. And as always, um, your Boca Chamber is here to assist uh, in any way we can. You can see on your screen, uh, I mentioned our web page. We are constantly delivering these types of what I consider value-packed webinars, just like the one we had with Kelly right now. Uh, we also have an app. Go to your app store, download the Boca Chamber app. And as always, uh, as you do with the BDB, continue to give us feedback here at the Boca Chamber so we continue to move business forward. So uh, with that, again, Kelly, thank you so much. You stayed on thank your you. feet the entire hour. Good for you. Um, really appreciate your time and, and give thanks to your, your team who does a lot of great work. And uh, everybody stay healthy, stay safe. Um, if you're interested in joining us early tomorrow morning for our monthly wide virtual chamber membership breakfast sponsored by office depot uh, you can join us in the morning but until then i uh, will see you all soon thanks again take care thank you troy thanks kelly